What's going on? I'm FP Anzagi. Welcome back to another video. It's been a long time since I have done a video. I was very, very sick at the end of game week four. And then, of course, we've had the international break. My voice is pretty much 100% again. I completely lost my voice. And it's okay to do YouTube videos when you're sick. But when you're sick and you lose your voice, it's very difficult to do YouTube videos. So it's good to be back. I'm very excited that FPL and Premier League football is back. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my transfer plans, the players I'm looking to bring into the team for game week five, and also the players that I'm looking to bring into the team over the next few game weeks. We do have a double game week announced for Luton and Burnley in game week seven. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what my plans are there. Am I looking to bring any double game week players into the team? And of course, when players come in, players must also leave. So I'm going to talk to you about my players that I'm looking to sell as well. If you're enjoying the content, if you're happy that I'm back, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe and drop a comment in the comment section below. I respond to each and every single one of them. And let's take a look at the first player I'm looking to bring into my team this week and it's Destiny Udogi. I've been very encouraged by the way Spurs have started under Ange Postacoglu. I was very close to having a Spurs defender, probably Pedro Porro, in my game week one team, but I wanted to see how Spurs started under Ange before I started to jump on any of their players. Now, a lot of people talking about James Madison and Son. We'll talk about those guys in just a moment. But at the moment, my defense is an area of weakness. I've got Gabriel. He is an issue that I will need to deal with. I've got Lissandro Martinez from Manchester United as well. Ben Chilwell's fixtures are okay in the short term, but he might not be in my team forever. So I've got a few issues. A stupid Ann as well. Brighton's fixtures get quite difficult. So if you're anything like me, you might be looking for a defender. And Destiny Udogi is at the top of my shopping list at the moment. He scored 12 points against Bournemouth, 5 points against Burnley. Despite Spurs looking like they'll concede in most matches, Destiny Udogi gives us the option of attacking potential as well. So even if Spurs don't keep a clean sheet, Destiny Udogi is one of those players who can get you attacking returns, which is what we want from our defenders. I was reading an article today that said the 14 clean sheets we've had across the whole league in the first four game weeks is the lowest that we've had in any of the last 10 seasons of Premier League football. So at the moment, defenses are not keeping clean sheets. And if they're not going to keep a clean sheet, you want defenders who can get attacking returns. And Destiny Udogi is certainly one of those players. He's 0.17 minutes per non-pen XGI. Tells us that he's a decent threat for attacking potential. He's ranked 22nd out of all defenders in the Premier League. 5.8 points per match is the fourth best. It's a little inflated by that result against Bournemouth, but it's the game week five fixture that I'm really tempted by. I don't have any Spurs players in my team. I can make it a straightforward downgrade of Martinez or even Gabriel to Udogi, who's just 4.7 million. And Sheffield United at home is as good as it gets. I think if Spurs are going to keep a clean sheet in any game this season, Sheffield United at home is the one that they'll do it in. And I think it's also a great fixture for attacking potential. He goes into Arsenal and Liverpool in game week six and seven. So if you are going to buy Destiny Doggy or a Spurs player, you might want to think about whether you have to play him in game week six and game week seven. For me, a stupid ant has Bournemouth at home in game week six. Chilwell's got a decent fixture and I'm always going to play Ruben Diaz, my Man City defender. So I can afford to get you Doggy this week and then bench him for Arsenal and potentially bench him as well for Liverpool in game week seven. But it's that Sheffield United fixture in game week five, and then they come out of the two difficult fixtures with Luton in game week eight. The benefit for Spurs as well is that they don't have any European football, and they've been knocked out of the Carabao Cup now. So Spurs won't be playing on the weekend and then midweek. They'll just be playing one game per week, which is ideal. I don't think we'll see too much rotation. You compare that to the likes of Man City or Arsenal or even Brighton, teams who are still in the cup, 
who are playing European football and, of course, still playing in the Premier League. So they've got some tough match matches, a very congested fixture schedule, and that's why I'm very tempted by Destiny Udogi, especially for that Sheffield United fixture in Game Week 5. Now, another defender from Spurs is Pedro Porro. I actually think that Pedro Porro's attacking potential is better than Destiny Udogi. And a lot of people are going towards Udogi. So if you want to be a little bit different, Pedro Porro is a great alternative. He's a little bit more expensive. He's 5 million. He's 5.3 points per match. He's just a little bit behind you, doggy. He's had a little bit more consistency in his points. He's had six, six, and then four against Burnley. He hasn't had that 12-pointer that uh, you, doggy had against Bournemouth. But his minutes per non-pen XGI is better than you, doggy. So if they're both going to be playing 90 minutes, you would back Pedro Porro to get more attacking returns. And I think that's what we've seen. He's taken seven shots, which is the third most of any defender. Only one shot inside the box. So this guy likes to take aim from long range. But we saw at the end of last season, he's more than capable of scoring a worldie from outside the box. I'm not saying we should expect that to happen all the time, but if you want to be different, I really like Pedro Porro, and I've got 0.1 million in the bank. So I could afford to go from Martinez to Pedro Porro. I just think that there's a slight chance of Emerson Royal getting a start in any of these fixtures instead of Pedro Porro. Porro is probably more attacking. Royale still offers that attacking threat, but perhaps he's a little bit more solid defensively. Pedro Porro is like a winger classified as a defender. So that's why I really like his attacking potential. But if you've got Porro and your doggy there, despite Porro having better attacking threat, I think that I would take the safety of minutes and go for you, doggy. But if you want to go a little bit different, I think Pedro Porro is totally fine. And then Son, he scored 20 points last week against Burnley. A lot of people are saying, well, why now are we looking to get Son in? We're knee-jerking. He's not done well at all this season. And then he plays Burnley. We have to remember that it's just Burnley. But what we are forgetting there is that prior to the Burnley game, Son has played left wing in every single match this season in the Premier League. He's looked terrible at left wing. He's hardly been involved. He's not been a threat. He's not been a great asset on the left wing, but Ange Postacoglu has moved him into the number nine position. Richarlison has struggled in front of goals, and Son, three shots, three goals, 20 points. Now, I don't think we should expect Son to score from every shot he takes moving forward, but he is historically a fantastic finisher. And even in the more difficult games against Arsenal and Liverpool, you would still back Son to do well. In the last few seasons, it's actually been in the more difficult games that Son has performed quite well because he is such a good counter-attacking player. Now, they're playing for a different manager in a totally different system. I don't think Spurs are going to be counter-attacking in the same way they were under previous managers. But Son loves space in behind defences. And Liverpool is one team in particular who have a really high defensive line and Son could expose that. So even those difficult fixtures against Arsenal and Liverpool, I'm not put off by. He's 9.1 million now. So if you've got Rashford or Bruno, you've got a little bit of cash in the bank and you're starting to get a little bit concerned about the Manchester United attack. I think that you could justify moving from Rashford to Son, especially with all of the concerns that United have. Who's going to play right wing? Will it be Sancho? It looks like Anthony's been stood down. I don't even think that Sancho will play. He's having uh, some issues with the manager at the moment. So who's going to play right wing? Will that be Bruno? What's going to happen to Bruno's attacking output if he's playing right wing? Will Rashford have to play right wing? We've seen when Rashford has been moved from the left, to the center that he's not really performed too well from an FPL perspective. So there are some question marks around the United attackers. And if you've got that spare transfer, moving to Son is perfectly fine. I will say though, that the United fixtures across the next four are better than what Tottenham have. So despite the fact that Spurs have Sheffield United at home in game week five, and United have Brighton at home in game week five, game week six and seven, United clearly have better fixtures. And from an attacking perspective, you might not think that United are going to win any of these games, but it's hard to see United not scoring. And if they score goals, it's Rashford, it's Bruno, 
who is going to be involved in that. So if you've got Rashford or Bruno and you're getting a little bit itchy, squeaky bum time, you want to move off, I think Son is the best replacement to go for. But for me, I don't think that Son will come into my team this week. I'm happy to be patient with Rashford and Bruno Fernandes. I wanted to very quickly take a look at some of the top players that are being transferred in and players that are being transferred out in the game at the moment. And Son there, number one, we've already spoken about him. You can see why he's so popular with the 20 points and then he's got Sheffield United at home this week. But like I said, I don't think that he's gonna be coming into my team. A lot of people are selling the United players. So if we have a look at the players who are being transferred out, Rashford is quite high up there. But the fixtures for Rashford, you've got Brighton at home in game week five, but then Burnley and Crystal Palace in game week six and seven. They're good fixtures from an attacking perspective. Brentford at home in game week eight, and then Sheffield United in game week nine. So across the next five or six fixtures, I actually don't mind the United fixtures, and I'm not that tempted to move Rashford out, but he has been sold by a lot of managers. Nicholas Jackson as well is the most sold player in the game. And he has underwhelmed just the one goal so far this season. He's got more yellow cards than goals. He's got three yellow cards and just the one goal. One point against Nottingham Forest at home was quite frustrating for owners. He missed that big chance as well. You can see his XG of 0.92. He definitely should have scored in that game against Nottingham Forest at home. But I'm happy to keep patient with Jackson for now. I am thinking about potentially moving Jackson on in game week six for Morris, who has the double game week, of course, for Luton. But I'm happy to give him the Bournemouth away fixture in game week five. No need to sell Jackson. If you've got him this week, I would definitely be holding on to Jackson. Jao Pedro is someone who I would be holding on to as well. I think that Brighton can score against United. And then they've got Bournemouth at home in game week six. We know that Danny Welbeck is injured at the moment. And there's some concerns around Evan Ferguson as well. So I think Jao Pedro will play. I don't have too many concerns about his minutes. So if you've got Jao Pedro, there's no need to move him on in any hurry. If we have a look at some of the other players that are being transferred in, Madison, of course, we know Spurs' fixtures are good. Alvarez is an interesting one. Now, City have a lot of fixtures coming up over the next month. They've got the Carabao Cup. They've got the Champions League about to start as well. Alvarez, so far this season, has played 90 minutes, except for the Fulham game. He came off in the 89th minute, but close to 90 minutes in every game so far this season. If you started with Alvarez, you've done very well. Seven points per match is absolutely fantastic. I just wonder whether we might have missed the boat. I wouldn't be buying him away to West Ham. If you do want to go for Alvarez, I think it's a game week six punt against Nottingham Forest at home or even Wolves away in game week seven. But then you've got to figure out what you'll do with all of your City players against Arsenal, Brighton and United in game weeks eight to ten because that's not a great run of fixtures even for the best team in the league. It's interesting that Romero is the most popular Spurs defender. I wouldn't be going for him. He's the same price as you, Doggy. He's got a history of yellow cards and giving away fouls as well. He's not too great for the bonus points. So if you're looking for a Spurs defender, I wouldn't be going for Romero. I'd be going for you, Doggy, or for Pedro Porro. If we have a look at my team here on FPL.team, this is how I'm lined up for game week five. I've got Turner in goals against Burnley at home over Pickford, who's playing Arsenal. That's a pretty straightforward selection for me. I've actually got Gabriel in the starting 11 here. I think that he will start now that Arteta is inverting from the left with a fit Zinchenko. Now that Zinchenko's fit, I think that really does impact on Gabriel's minutes. Ruben Diaz and Chilwell, my other two defenders. Bruno Fernandes and Rashford playing Brighton at home. I think that's a good fixture from an attacking perspective. Brighton have really struggled defensively so far this season. Sterling and Jackson playing Bournemouth away, of course. Saka Everton away. Mbumo with his most difficult fixture of the season against Newcastle, but there's no need to sell Mbumo because he's got Everton and Nottingham Forest in the next two fixtures. So if I was to make my planned transfer of Martinez to Udogi, then I would want to play Udogi over one of my defenders here. Now the question is, do I play him over Ruben Diaz, who's got West Ham away, 
Much more nailed for minutes than Gabrielle, but I don't know if City will keep a clean sheet against West Ham away. West Ham have been good from an attacking perspective. Jared Bowen has looked great this season. And Arsenal, I think, will keep a clean sheet away against Everton. So I could bench Ruben Diaz. He doesn't have much attacking threat where Gabriel does, but the risk there is that Gabriel doesn't start and Gabriel comes on for a late cameo. But I am tempted to play Udogi over Ruben Diaz. So if I go across to game week six, I've still got two free transfers. I've only used one of my two free transfers. And this is the week that I would start to look at Newcastle defenders. So Newcastle plays Sheffield United in game week six, and then Burnley at home in game week seven. So I want my Newcastle defenders in place. And Luton, of course, play Wolves in game week six. And then they've got the double of Everton and Burnley in game week seven. That's a really nice double. Now, I know that it's Luton, but I will always go for a double game week player, especially someone who is on penalties. So in game week six, what I'm likely to do, I'll play a Stupinan here. And I'll play Ruben Diaz over Udogi. And I can move Gabriel on for Trippier. Play Trippier probably over Chilwell. I don't think that I'll bench any of my other attackers. And then what I'm likely to do is to sell Jackson for Morris. That's how I can afford the Trippier move. Morris comes in for Wolves at home, which I think is perfectly fine. Pickford backing goals. I don't want Turner against Man City. And I'm quite happy with that. I don't mind playing Morris against Wolves at home. I think that's a good fixture. The rest of the team looks quite strong. And I've used my two free transfers without taking a hit. Now, in game week seven, Pickford's got Luton at home. I'm not really tempted to go for a Luton goalkeeper. I'm not really tempted to go for Burnley, uh, for, for Trafford in goals from Burnley either. I think I'll just keep Pickford there. I've got one free transfer. The team looks okay. I'll play Chilwell over a Stupinan here. Mbumo's got Nottingham Forest away, and this is the double game week week. So I could, if I wanted to, downgrade Chilwell for a Luton defender like Giles, but I'm not sure that I want to go for a Luton defender I think if I have too many Luton players in my team, it's going to force my hand for the wild card. So I come into game week seven, I've got one free transfer and I could legitimately roll that transfer here and go into game week eight when Manchester City play Arsenal with two free transfers and I'm likely to play my wild card around game week 10. Spurs play Luton away here. So I could move Saka on for Son. And then I need to free up 0.3 million with my second free transfer. So I could bench Morris here and play Archer instead. The wild card is not too far away, but I've got two free transfers to try and deal with some of the issues in my team. You know, try and move the Luton players on. Brentford's fixtures are going to start to turn. Chelsea's fixtures are going to start to turn as well. So I could use my two free transfers to start to target that fixture swing. And then I'm looking to play my wild card in game week 10. I'll talk a little bit about my wild card plans in a later video, but those are my transfer plans up until around game week eight, including that double game week for Luton and Burnley in game week seven. That's it for today's video. Make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe as well if you haven't done so, and post any questions you've got in the comment section below. It's great to be back. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Lots more content to come this week. I'll be back with my game week preview video as well as my team selection and the deadline stream on Saturday as well. So make sure you tune in for that. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.